Alright, hello everyone, and welcome into the Lore Council. This is Cade, and I am joined today with Keith. Hello! And today, we are going over and reviewing the 2004 film, Hellboy, uh, directed by Guillermo del Toro, who also wrote the screenplay and um, co-wrote the story. Yeah, uh, definitely a classic comic adaptation movie. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it's also uh, very relevant that we recorded it today because uh, the first release of Hellboy um, at the Man Village Theater, the premiere, was actually March 30th in 2004. Oh, wow. So, big ol' 18th anniversary of Hellboy. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure what you can do when you're 18 anymore because they've changed all the laws where I'm from. Uh, yeah, it's almost 20 years old. Wow. Yeah, and uh, I think all the effects and everything in it still hold up super, super well. Yeah, it's definitely one of those movies that's very unique, uh, just considering it's like the time period it was released in, you know, 2004. The big, you know, superhero movies at the time were like Batman, Spider-Man. Well, was Batman uh, a big thing yet? Yeah, Batman 1989. I guess, Return. but I mean... The, the four original Batman movies. Yeah, but after... After Batman and Robin, I mean, they kind of took a break from Batman because I think Dark Knight. Yeah, basically, Blade comes out in 1999, and then uh, Spider Man, Spider -Man X Men. X Men came out in 2000, yeah. yeah. I would say, yeah, Spider Man and X Men were probably definitely the big superhero movies of the day. Yeah, so in an age where things were moving towards this more slick kind of superhero movie with like team ups and stuff like that, we get Hellboy. Hellboy, yeah. Well, he is on a team, he has a team. He works for the for the uh, BPRD. Sure. Yeah. He's got a squad. But yeah, you've told me that you like this movie a lot. Yes, I um, I absolutely adore this movie. Ever since I was a kid. Oh, did you have this on like DVD or something and you can watch it a lot? Um Well, I think for a while we didn't and it, it would just be on like it they would have like daytime showings on like the weekend of it on like fx or whatever okay whatever yeah. channel or like tnt whatever it would be on it so i remember watching it all the time and then i remember when we finally got it on dvd like the day we got it like i watched it and it basically became something that like my buddies and i would watch like all the time huh. uh, and i never knew at the time that it was uh based off of a comic book otherwise i probably would have forced my mother to buy the comic books I mean, it does say in the you know opening credits. I'm pretty sure, DC comic adaptation or uh, not DC, but Dark Horse. Dark Horse, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm I'm sure it did, but I know I was uh, nine years old when this movie came out, so I probably Ooh. did not pay attention. I did not see this movie in theaters, unfortunately. Yep. No, yeah. For me, I definitely distinctly remember watching this on the channel FX, uh, which, if you're not familiar, was like. I'm pretty sure it was like Fox's little channel where they, the the, the main thing, at least the main reason I watched it is because they would show movies and they had this thing called FX, special FX or something like that. And yeah. they would show you a movie but and like uh, in between like commercial breaks, they would show you like special features from the film, a little behind the scenes stuff. And they, they loved to play Hellboy like all the time. So always on. And uh, yeah, this is one of those movies I kind of just know, you know, front and back. Pretty pretty solid movie. Oh yeah, super solid movie. I love it. Um, it also got if me. If you could, if you could just like put into words why you like it, you know, maybe in a sentence or two. Um. Well, it ha it has a great cast. Like the casting, I f I think is really spot on. Like nobody's giving like a bad performance. Oh, okay. Um, they're all locked in their tails off. Uh, I think the effects, like like I said earlier, I think they've aged really well. I think um, Hellboy, like the titular character, I think he he looks amazing. It's a very very unique design, especially for oh, the, yeah. the time. And I think um, Ron Perlman kind of like I. Everyone is doing a great job, but I think Ron Perlman just like carries this movie on his back. Like he is the MVP. His performance is great. Like it it has like a really good like kind of dry sense of humor and yeah. yeah it's just just really really great and it's a nice over the top paranormal superhero i guess an air quotes story 
Right, yeah, and uh, Ron, Ron Perlman definitely born to play this role with that, you know, very unique <laughs> face that he has. Yeah, that block carved out of rock, or the uh, chin. It looks like his face was carved by angels. Yeah. No, uh... <clears throat> Yeah, Ron Perlman, already a pretty good character actor, and then you give them this role, and this is kind of like, this is like the role he was born to play, and finally, you know, is like a leading man, superhero role, pretty great, and yeah, he's, he's perfect for the role, it's, I mean, what else can you say? Yeah, I mean, he has like the voice, the the presence, I mean, it, he's got the whole get up on, and it, it just looks great. Yeah, they uh, obviously wanted to stay very faithful, or Guillermo del Toro wanted to be as faithful to the comic as possible, and he even had the uh, the creator of the comic, like, consulting with him, or help, he helped with writing, something like that, right? Uh, oh, I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, it's good stuff there. Uh, when I first saw, like, Hellboy, I thought, like, those red... Like you know his uh, his horns, I thought those were like goggles that he wore on his head. Oh sure, is what it looks like from far away. Oh yeah, they are not goggles. No, they are his uh, filed down horns. Because he's a demon, you see, from hell. Yeah, and I guess if we could, uh, I guess summarize things for the folks that are not familiar with Hellboy, if you've just been living under a rock for the past twenty years. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it basically in 1944, on like the kind of towards the end of World War II, um, Grigory Rasputin uh, and some Nazis are trying to build a dimensional portal off uh, the coast of Scotland, I believe, and they are gonna they're gonna free the Ogdru Jihad, uh, basically to help them defeat the Allies and win World War II. They open up the portal, but then the Allied teams with a scientist or a team of allies from the allied forces um, with a... They are allies and they're, yeah, they're they, allied with each other. That's true. Yeah, but some uh, basically United States um, soldiers um, with Trevor Bruttenholm uh, end up killing the German team and the portal's destroyed and it absorbs Rasputin and a couple of the Nazis escape. And the Americans and Brittenholm end up finding a little, a cute little baby demon. And they name him Hellboy, and Brittenholm basically adopts him as his son. Yeah, and that's the, uh, that's the opening of the movie. Yeah, it, it's, I really like that, that opening sequence. Yeah, it's really fun. It opens the movie on, like, a nice little bit of action. It kind of, it sets up the plot really well with, like, the portal and the Ogdru Jihad. And we get our main antagonist, uh, Grigory Rasputin. Yeah, and we're also introduced to some other characters, his uh, minions, his underlings, I guess. Uh, Cronin, Karl Ruprecht Cronin. Yeah. Otherwise known as the freak in the gas mask. Uh, I, lo I love his, his first outfit in the movie where he's basically just wearing like a black gas mask with a Waffen SS uniform. Yes. It looks really good. Yeah, it looks really interesting. <laughs> Very, yeah, uh, very evil. They, yeah, they're all Nazis. It's like the, uh, it's like the cult branch of, uh, you know, the Nazis, right? Yeah, basically. Very cool, kind of, you know, based on you know real world stuff. The more occult, uh, behind the scenes kind of paranormal stuff. Yeah. And the uh, what the tagline for the movie? I'm pretty sure they they stuck this in all the commercials. It's uh, when things go bump in the night, we bump back. Nice. I, I don't remember that. Yeah, that sounds about He's, right. Well, uh, when, when um, old glasses guy, you know, the old guy that's in this movie, mm -hmm. uh, he's a very good actor. I just can't recall his name. He's explaining to our, I guess, our main protagonist, you know, about the whole history of the paranormal order and stuff like that. And like, there are things that go bump in the night, and we are what bumps back. Are, you're talking about Bruttenholm, right? The, the doctor? Yes, sure. Yeah, John Hurt. Oh, John Hurt, yeah. Yes. Uh, oh, John Hurt, yeah, he was an alien, of course. Wow. You fool. You absolute buffoon. Yeah. And... Wait, well, uh... So yeah, they, they have a younger version of him in the opening. Yes. Who does a really, really good job of impersonating him. 
Oh, yeah, no, it's it's really, really good. Um, it's some and, guy that uh, we unfortunately don't remember. No, oh, yes. It's not important enough to remember. Yeah, well, he's in the like, first, like, five minutes of the movie, so... But yeah, then we get a nice little time skip, and um, we get Cronin and Hauptstein. They resurrect Rasputin, oh. and we get our kind of... Our fish out of the water, I guess. Uh, You're doing it again. What's that? Oh, um... What do you mean, fish out of water? Uh, well, because uh, Agent Myers gets transferred. The FBI oh, agent yeah. that gets transferred, so he's kind of our fish out of the water. Oh, yeah, sure. But yeah, and this is basically where we're introduced to the rest of the squad. Yeah, we get to see the, the headquarters of the um, Paranormal Whatever Society. Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense, BPRD. <laughs> Whatever you say, buddy. Yeah, we get introduced to Abe Sapien, which is kind of funny because he very clearly is not a homo sapien. He's a f fish man, frog man. Talking fish man. Talking fish man. And... Yeah, he looks great. Uh, oh, yeah, he, he still looks really, really great. Yeah, like the prosthetics and the makeup and everything just holds up super well. Uh, the guy who acts for him, he's great. Don't know his name, but he plays uh, Saru in Star Trek Discovery. Oh, nice. I have not seen that. And, yeah, he's, he's the uh, intellectual of the group. Yeah, he's the smart guy the scientist guy. reads the books. Well, besides the other scientist. He reads books and reads minds. Yes. Or, no, he can, he, can, he can sense things with his hands by touching them, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I forget what the actual name of that is. And, basically, from here, we get our first kind of paranormal creature fight. Uh, they go to a museum and they fight it. Um, I don't remember what the creature is called, but it looks really good. And yeah, Hellboy. All right, and we are back from technical difficulties. But yeah, this is where we get the first big, um, first big like action set piece besides the opening where we get Hellboy after he's requested to go investigate a paranormal incident at a museum, and he battles a really cool looking creature. Yeah, we get to see the whole uh, squad show up to the uh, the scene. They, their uh, superhero vehicle is a garbage truck. Yes, yes, very. Um, well, it's fun because they have to be like incognito. It's not, you know, it's not like Batman rolling up in like the Batmobile, yeah. or something. Really fun. I think that's a really great little um, element that they added in as well. That like, the BPRD is like op they're always operating, but it's like in plain sight like it's very incognito which is very funny because it's a fun juxtaposition of you know this hulking demon with a big rock arm you know being sneaky no yeah, he's, a, he's a secret and they even have a little scene with uh our main dude who's in charge of the paranormal stuff oh like the director or whatever basically yeah. uh yeah, the guy who always smokes cigars timbre sure played by tom manning yeah, yeah, he's just giving, like, a little interview on, like, the Today Show, and they're like, Hellboy, is he a thing? There's pictures, is there, like, a paranormal research thing? And he's like, no, there's no such thing, the government never lies. Yeah, basically. Ten seconds later, Hellboy. Hellboy. And, yeah, and there, there's a little line that Hellboy says, I think, it's kind of it's foreshadowing for the next movie, at least, where he's looking out the glass inside the garbage truck. He's, like, and he's looking at all, like, the reporters and press and stuff, he's like, you know... Look at that, Abe. One sheet of glass between us and them. Yeah. You know, one, one sheet of glass between Hellboy and, uh, getting revealed. And the that's not this movie. And the adoring public. Yeah, I like, so I like, it, it, basically there's like a, you know, there's a case, right? There's like a paranormal case, and we get to see how the Hellboy team gets set up for this kind of thing. It's really cool. It all seems very routine. Oh yeah, it's like it's it's literally just another like another another day, another dollar. Right, yeah, this is basically Hellboy's day job, night job, job. <laughs> and uh Yeah, we uh what's the name of the like the main dude who we who's supposed to be like the audience uh stand in? Uh we'll the, call him John John Myers is the Sure. Agent Myers. Okay. Yeah, Myers. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so Myers is kind of there to be basically the yeah the audience stand-in so you know 
everything instead of being explained or to the audience or you know you just have characters explaining things for no reason they explain everything to myers yeah and it, it's it's really fun it gives us like a well exactly like you said like he's a really good audience surrogate because obviously That's what I was looking for. Yeah, surrogate. yes no you're good um because in the in the comic books like all this stuff is just like presented to you but obviously comics and film are a very different like medium and so it's yeah, really and he's uh it's not the most compelling character but you know he gets the job done i guess yeah it gets it gets the job done he's along for the ride and we get a fun fun battle between hellboy and a monster yes but before that uh i i like that uh when hellboy's getting ready just to go in uh they're talking about like what the thing could be it's like oh it's it's something's in there and then he's just like all right you know he pulls out like a bullet that's got like uh Silver shavings, uh, a bunch of, you know, uh, monster nonsense that kills monsters, right? Yeah, monster... Whole, whole, white oak, uh, holy water, all, all in one bullet. He's like, the works. Oh, yeah, yeah. Really good, uh, really fun thing, because obviously all these, you know, creepy crawlies and creatures are all, you know, they're all real. So, of course, all the things that kill them are also real, so really fun little thing it's basically all those like spooky stories that like your granddad told you those are all real yeah I would, yeah so werewolves and vampires confirmed in hellboy yeah confirmed and yeah and then we get the yeah, fight the, the it's creature yeah it looks really cool the design of it yeah it is an actual like costume with a dude inside it probably yes. some puppet stuff in there too uh, there, there is some parts where like it's, you know, it's a CG creature, but a yeah, lot the, of the time you're just looking at a dude in a suit. suit. Yeah, and it it and looks really cool. It's really like creepy looking. It's got like a dog skull kind of. Yeah, yeah. He's supposed to be the Hound of Resurrection, so yeah, kind of looks like a dog. But like a, he just looks like a like a dog Cthulhu monster, really. Yeah, yeah. Really. Got tentacles and multiple eyes and crap. Yeah, it's got, like, a skull for a face. It's got, like, big claws. It, everything you need to uh, be a nice, spooky long, monster. gross tongue. Yes. Oh, yes. That was always... Yeah. Yeah. It's it's really cool. Really good to see. The fight choreography is really good. The camera work is awesome. Yeah, Hellboy gets tossed around. Stuff, pretty much everything in there breaks. Oh, yeah. It's really fun. It's uh, like a yeah. bull in a china shop. Until eventually Hellboy is just tossed out the window. Yeah. And then he, uh... Well, they end, up, they end up killing it, don't they? Uh... No, it uh, no? He crashes into the garbage and oh, then yes. Myers comes outside to save Hellboy. Yes, yep, you are right. Um, but yeah, and so... Um, after this, we get uh, introduced to Liz. Liz Sherman. Who yeah, and the, the movie he stopped dead. Yeah, the... Yeah, Liz isn't the most... Also, this is Halloween night in the movie. Oh, yes. Yeah, also very important. Don't, very... don't think of this as a Halloween movie, though, but... No, yeah. no, definitely not. Um, but no, yeah, Liz... Um, yeah, I don't know if it was just, like, the writing for her or the actress, but it, it never clicked the way that like the castings did for everyone else yeah uh this chick uh i think she was in legally blonde uh she was the mean chick um yeah i'm just i, I don't know what it is about her character but she's just like this you know drab you know dull character for most of it she's just kind of she got a grumpy face all the time she's, yeah uh, yeah the, for me when this part happens the movie's pacing is just kaput you know, because um, basically the Hellboy Hellboy goes to, like, track down the monster again, and then he chases it into the sewer, and gets his ass beat, and he eventually electrocutes it to death by touching the third rail. Yeah. And uh, then he goes and he steals some beer from people, and he goes to see Liz, who lives in a mental hospital. Yeah, because she has unstable pyrokinetic abilities, so essentially she can manipulate and create fire. Yeah, no idea why she's in like a regular, uh, like, yeah, that's uh, asylum when she's not. Why, why isn't she in like a super secret government? Paranormal yeah, place? yeah. I always thought that was weird too. You know, some someplace fireproof. <laughs> that would be helpful. 
Yeah. No. Uh, so, yeah, uh, and Hellboy basically shows up and he's like, Liz, hey, I like you. Yeah, and this is I'm a back. very, very small thing, but I don't know why, just the way Ron Perlman says Liz, it's so pleasant sounding. Uh, yeah, oh. but, but I don't yeah. know, that's just me. Just the way he says it, like, with his, like, gruff voice, it, it sounds really cool. I don't know why. That Just specifically the way he says Liz, I don't know random yeah, random fine. fanboy gush but that but yeah it's not and then... unpleasant uh yeah so i guess uh liz was like grew up with hellboy kind of they used to be i guess they grew up in the paranormal place together sort of and she left and hellboy's still pining for her. yeah yeah one of those things where it's like they were the I guess ba basically she's the love interest. Yeah, she's <laughs> that's, that's the love all you interest. Need to know. Uh, that's but all yeah, all the plot needs. Yeah, this is also the point where everyone starts to learn that, like, oh, Rasputin was resurrected, and I think Abe finds out basically that the monster can like lay eggs and basically revive itself every time it dies. And he also well, they learned know that they just know it lays eggs. Or yeah. And uh Yeah, and then this is where we also find out that Britain Holm is dying, so we get a lot of stuff in like a little condensed kind of part here in the middle. Yeah, there's like a flashback showing what happened at the museum before and how they re uh, resurrected uh, uh, what's the dog's name? Cthulhu dog. I don't remember. Stardew or Sarnath. Star dog. Arnon. Sardog. Samael. It's Samael. Samael. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we get a cool little action sequence with uh, Cronin again. I, got, I I love all the different outfits Cronin has in this. And uh, he uses these, like, uh, like baton blade things. Yeah. I'm sure there's, like, an actual name for him. But I, I just like his whole, his whole thing that he's got going on. He's, like, a immortal clockwork person. Yeah, steampunk Nazi. He's gotta like he's gotta like wind himself up whenever he gets ready for a battle. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's really fun in the way it's like designed and built into his um uh outfit look really good. Yeah, just a badass uh, pr uh antagonist. And uh Yeah, um so yeah, Rasputin, he's just he's just all over the place doing creepy Cthulhu stuff. Uh, he's not dressed as a priest, but he, he just kind of looks like a priest, the way, like, his whole outfit. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I like. Yeah, it looks really good. The dude who plays him, I can't remember off the top of my head, but he's doing a bang-up job. It's verging on over the top, but it works in, like, the setting. Yeah, definitely not bad. Yeah, really like it, and then unfortunately, um... Yeah, we basically get a very early version of... The whole Joker thing where Cronin is, he like pretends to be defeated to get brought in and bat, well, back to like a bunch the... of steps there, buddy. Yeah, we're just hitting the big parts. But there's like a whole sequence where they, eggs well, the boys like, yeah, yeah, they have to go yeah. look for the eggs and stuff. And then they get, what's his name? Cronin. Cronin. Yeah, they... They... Yeah, again, another sequence that kind of slows down the movie is that whole underground sequence. Yeah, they go down to, like, the sewers to look for the Samael eggs. Oh, maybe, maybe it's just because it seemed like whenever Hellboy was on TV, it was always at this exact theme that it was playing. <laughs> yeah, probably, honestly. Uh, they love to... Uh, I always, like, just ended up getting put in, like, halfway through a movie, and I'm like, oh, it's the slow part. But the good parts will be on in, like, 20 minutes. Yeah, like, it's kind of creepy, you know, like, Abe has to swim underwater with all these, uh, Samuels in there and stuff. Yeah. Um, Hellboy's, like, caretaker partner gets stabbed to death by Cronin. Yeah, and then we have the... Hairplugs guy. Yeah, hairplugs guy. But what? Then oh. we have the twist. Well, yeah, Cronin does the thing where he pretends to be defeated to get brought to the... B B P R D B R B P R D, and um, yeah. Then we find out we get like a really kind of shoehorned in like love triangle thing, where 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Myers like, and in, Liz in, in go out for, for coffee. Because then right, the movie basically like in order for uh, Grandpa or whatever to die, we got to get Hellboy out of the place. So yes, so Hellboy is a creepy stalker and follows the two as they go out. They go out for like a lunch date or whatever, coffee. and then Cronin reanimates himself, which is a really really fun scene. And then yeah, he just sits like right up while he's got this like plastic over him, and it's, you, you, you can see like his creepy face all like torn off yeah and then Rasputin shows up and they he like does like a vision thing to Brittenholm and he's like oh Hellboy's evil and Brittenholm's like oh no I love Hellboy he's my son yeah yeah there's this whole thing and Rasputin's basically like you need to die in order to lead the child to where he needs to go and then he's like because you took care of him I'll show you a vision of the future yeah do you know the boy's true name? He's like, no, I know his name. I call him Son. Son. I always like that. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. Um, Britton Holm is the sacrificial fog- father figure that all heroes have to have. Indeed, yeah, he's uh, he's Hellboy's Ben Kenobi. Yeah, he is. Uh, and he dies at about the same point that Ben Kenobi dies in uh, A New Hope. And... Yeah, about two-thirds-ish. Yeah, two thirds way through, and then um, Hellboy yeah. comes back, and oh no, oh no, and his his father figure is unalived. Yeah, and they just left like a little scrap of paper with him to, to lead to lead the way. Yeah, I think it says like lot two four nine or something. Yeah, and uh, from there we kind of start heading towards the finale. Yeah, I remember there was something they had like. They all had to get together, or... Oh, also, we forgot to mention that uh, Rasputin shows up to Liz, to Liz's, like, room, and, like, makes her, uh... Basically have, like, a bad dream and, like, burn the whole asylum down. Oh, yes. Yeah. And then she gets brought back to Hillboy Place. Yes. Yep. And basically, from there, um... Manning, um... Oh, yeah, Manning, played by Jeffrey Tambor. I had that backwards earlier. I must be starving from lunch um yeah manning um takes over the bprd and they locate rasputin's mausoleum mausoleum yes i for some reason i forgot the word for it i was gonna say cemetery but no a mausoleum is in a cemetery and it's they get to go to russia yes yeah i love the cemetery sequence. yes oh it looks cool so great and uh yeah, Hellboy needs some direction, so of course uh, he just does what anyone would do, and he asks one of the locals for help. Yeah. Very, very polite man he is. <laughs> oh, yes. Grave robbing and digging up corpses. Yeah. And then we kind of get the thing where everybody kind of gets separated after they enter the mausoleum, and then... The end sequence of... very similar to Aliens vs. Predator, I should say. Oh, what a what an interesting comparison. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, yeah, but basically, but yeah. once they get into the mausoleum and go underground, it just turns into this like huge freaking you know steampunk underground mausoleum thing. It's like what the hell? Yeah, yeah. Like, it, look, it looks really big in the movie. Oh yeah, it looks it looks gigantic, and the set design is like amazing. Like props to whoever designed the sets. Yeah, and there's some booby traps. Yeah, of course, as there are. And yeah, essentially it ends up where um, Hellboy and whoever's with him end Manning. up... Manning, yes, thank you. They end up getting to Cronin's lair, and they kill him. And another of his lairs. Uh, yeah, another one, you know. Good villain. Because he, he, he had a lair in the uh, the egg chamber thing. Yes, yes. This is his, 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 his lair away from home. His lair his away from lair. lair, yeah. Um, they end up killing... Home sweet lair. Lair sweet lair. No place like lair. Ah. Lair is where the heart is. <laughs> uh, be oh. it ever so heinous, there's no place like lair. Um, yeah, I, I like the... So, so going into his lair, there's like this hallway just filled with spikes on it. As you do. Very creepy. And uh, yeah. I guess it's meant as like a, a sort of guarding mechanism because Manning pricks his fingers on one of the things and it gives them gives away their position yeah and then we get yeah epic action fight sequence yeah. uh cool fight where of course the the boys end up winning 
Yeah, Hellboy almost gets uh, thrown into a spiked pit. Almost. <laughs> oh, I love this part. Um, I think Manning is just... He's just doing whatever, standing around, and then Cronin just comes out of nowhere and just slashes his arm. He's like, hey, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? <laughs> because it's like a normal situation. Yeah. Uh, I, lo I love the end of the fight, though. Cronin's just like laughing as he's like, you know, been impaled and Hellboy just drops a giant frickin' uh, clockwork piece. I don't know what it is. Steampunk he's, tech. He just, he just drops a giant steampunk gear on him and just crushes him to death amazing yep yeah you cannot uh immortality is not the same as invulnerability unfortunately yeah an old sandbags there bit off more than he could chew <laughs> um and then yeah we get um basically from here um going right along we get the big last fight with the samuels where there's a whole nest of them yeah, they brought in, like, explosives. They were like, okay, we gotta blow up the nest. Yeah, but then doesn't work, so then Liz yeah, has to yeah. use her pyro fire kinesis powers, and she just zap zorps them all. Indeed, yeah, very cool. Yeah, really, really cool scene. It al almost makes Liz interesting. Yeah, she says what's basically gonna become her catchphrase, uh, which is, uh, you should be running. Yeah. Like... Eh. Eh. Yeah, something about her delivery just doesn't work. Yeah, it... Uh, maybe they're going for that, like, 2004, like, edgy, badass female kind of thing. Maybe, maybe it's just her voice. That could be. Uh, but yeah, basically from here, moving on, um, we get the big Le Grand Finale. Uh, like, the good guys are all captured by Rasputin and Hauptstein, and then we get the, uh, the ending kind of comes a little quick, I would say. Like, the whole, just, like, conclusion of the movie. Yeah, because, uh, not much really happens. Like, for most of the movie, Hellboy's just kind of chasing around the, you know, demon dogs. Yeah. And then, uh, Rasputin time. Yeah, Rasputin time, because Rasputin yeah, starts to, uh, give the old suck to Liz's soul. And he's... Yeah, they basically just had to go through some booby traps in order to get there. And then, yeah. yeah, and we basically get the, um... The old villain offers a hero... You a must choice! Choose. choose! We haven't already seen that in Spider-Man, Batman Forever... Basically, every movie ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, door number one. Or door number two. Yeah, um, Liz dies, or you... Well, she, die. she gets her soul Well, sucked. soul sucked, which I'm... Well, wouldn't that be death? No, kind it's of, worse than death. It's worse than death, it's no soul. Well, her body would die. Probably. Or something. I don't know. I don't know how Rasputin's soul-absorbing works. Uh, is it like Mortal Kombat, where once your soul is his, like your your body's just dead? Who knows? Your soul is mine. Yeah, and it's basically door A, uh, Liz lives, and you release the Ogdru Jihad. Right, yeah, yeah, releasing the Ogdru Jihad, which is, I guess, Hellboy's father, right? Uh, and his whole reason for being is just to unlock this key thing and set it free. Yeah. That's why he has a giant stone hand. Yes, because Hellboy is the Anung Unrama, or however you would pronounce it, I don't, I don't remember. Sure. And yeah, he awakens his true powers, his horns grow, he looks super cool, and he... Yeah, he has a flaming, he has a flaming crown on his head. Yeah, looks really cool, really evil, uh, evil Hellboy, no longer Hellboy, he's Hellman. And, yeah, we... and he basically has to unlock this key thing, which is just like a big uh, stone monolith that has like two holes in it, which are the keys that he has to turn with his stone hand. But he only turns one, and he's like, nah, and he just rips off his horns and stabs Rasputin with one of them. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, and that reseals the Og Ogdru Jihad. Yeah, we almost get it, get to almost. See it break out, because it's like in this giant glass thing, and it breaks out, and it's reaching its tentacles towards the earth, but then Hellboy doesn't finish it, and so it just kind of disappears. Yeah. Back in the hole. 
Yeah, but then we get uh, Rasputin is possessed by like a a different demon thing. No, it's like it's part of it's uh, part of the o Ogdru Jihad. Yeah, yeah, it's part of it. It's yeah, he, he he brings back a little more of the master every time he says. So. Oh yeah, that's right. And so we get he like. He grows, like, to this giant tentacle monster, which, like, destroys him, and Haupstein is killed. And then we get the old classic Hellboy allows himself to be swallowed, and then blows up a belt of hand grenades, blowing it up from the inside. Yeah, the, the fight with the final Cthulhu monster isn't, like, super complicated. Hellboy just gets kind of whipped around for a bit, and then he gets grenades, and, yeah, gets swallowed, blown up. I've seen that, I've seen that plenty of times, but still satisfying. And yeah, then the hero and the uh, love interest make out, and yeah, roll credits. Yeah. I just ignore the third wheel, and yeah. Yeah. But yeah, overall, uh, great movie. I know it sounds like we kind of poo pooed on the middle part. It's not that bad. It's just, you know, it's it's the middle part. It's never going to be really like action filled or anything, but yeah, overall. Everything else is still good. We got to point out the, you know, weak spots. Yeah. Yeah, it went super, super well. Um, great movie. If you've made it, you know, 18 years and you haven't seen it, like, do yourself a favor. I'm, uh, is it streaming anywhere? Yeah, it's currently streaming on HBO Max. It is streaming on HBO Max. So uh, go watch it or you will be bashled. Yeah, definitely if you've never seen this before, yeah, it's always worth a watch. <laughs> Well, even if you've um, even if you've seen it and you haven't seen it, I I would honestly say I probably rewatch this movie like once a year. Yeah, maybe not that much for me, but yeah, every once in a while, yeah. I definitely prefer the second one, but this one is still a classic. Yeah, I prefer the first one, but I think the second one is a, is a classic. So the old inverse opinion. Whoa, whoa, uh, but yeah, um, yeah, that's it for the. For the review, guys, thanks for thanks for tagging along through our uh, review of this great, awesome, super cool movie. Um, don't forget we have a Discord, so if you ever want to converse with Keith and I and tell us how much you actually hate Hellboy and it's actually the worst movie ever written, uh, feel free to join so you can tell us everything. Also, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel and like the video if you've enjoyed what we've done here or uh, any other of the content we've made. Yeah, and anybody who joins the Discord uh gets a free cookie yes free cookies um but yeah this has been Cade from the lore council signing off this is keith and we'll see y'all later